Hey guys, this is Kenjo and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to show you how to take an image and kind of warp it in such a way so that it looks uh, like it fits into sort of a 3D shape. And we're going to do this using Blender. So now my channel is primarily about teaching image editing and all that kind of stuff with PaintShot Pro. But the channel is kind of like reaches into other domains as necessary. And I think this is a case where some of the requests, requests that I've received um, are better met using this software. And Blender is a free open source 3D modeling uh, software. I've used it quite a bit. I'm not a pro. There's a ton of other tutorials out there on Blender, but this is really just meant to be an introduction uh, for folks who are more used to only working in Im image editors to see what you can do and how you can do some simple 3D manipulations to an image to get a 3D effect. So when you come into Blender, you always traditionally start out with the default cube, as it is called. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do to make our lives a little bit easier in trying to bring an image in is to add an add-on that allows us to import an image as a 3D plane or an object, if you will. So we can do this very simply by going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then if we just type Plane, for example, we'll see that we can find the add-on which is import images as planes and then we can just check that box say save and load and then close this so now when we go to file and import you'll see there's an images as planes selection but before we do that we want to click on our default cube press x to delete and then now we can say File, Import, Image as Planes. And then you can navigate to any example image. I'm going to use one that I just put some text on a white background. I called it Text on Paper. And then we can say Import Images as Planes. So now what we'll see is we've got this rectangle in our view and it doesn't really have any representation of the image itself. But before we kind of get into that, a few other things I just want to point out because they're going to be key to what we're doing is that the other things in this view are we have a light source and we have our camera. So the camera is going to be what allows us to see what we're going to render into our final image. The light source is, as you can expect, going to affect from a 3D perspective the lighting on our image. So now let's select our image by left clicking on it and perhaps like zooming in a little bit. And in this view right now, we're seeing things just from the 3D model aspect. So if we want to actually see what our image looks like in this view, we need to come up to this corner here and select viewport shading. So then what that does now is it not only shows the geometry, but it shows the uh, in the 3D world, uh, images are referred to as textures. So this is this is like saying I want to display the texture on my 3D model. So now if we middle click and drag, we can kind of change the perspective, you know, of our view on this thing. So I kind of want to create something where we're looking a little bit down, but a little bit off kilter, not perfectly square. And then what I can do is hit Control, Alt, and Numpad 0. And what that does is it centers my camera so that I'm looking where I'm looking from my viewport. And equivalently, I want my paper to be kind of lying down. So then what I want to do is now that it's selected, I can press R. And then this will allow me to rotate it. But I want to rotate it about the Y axis, which is the green line you see there. So then I'll press Y. And now it restricts it so that I can rotate it just about the y-axis. And you can kind of see what the angle is in the top left corner as I move this, the value changes. And I know specifically I want this to be exactly minus 90 so that it's flat to the air quotes ground. So I can just type that in. And then perhaps I want to actually have like a background behind this thing so that instead of it just being floating in space, it looks more like it's sitting on a table. So then I can say Shift A and that will allow me to add something. And in this case, I just want to add another mesh, which is just another 3D object. And we'll just go with a plane. 
And then what we'll see, it's pretty much right in the same place as our paper. And I can just press S and drag the mouse to increase the scale. So you can see I'm trying to fill up the entire camera view so that we can't really see, you know, everything else that's going on. Um, but you can tell it's kind of interfering with my image. So if I re-click on my image, press G to grab it, and then press Z to restrict the movement of dragging it to up and down. You can see now it's not going to move anywhere left or right. It's just going to move up and down. And I just want to bring it a little bit above that plane. So then now just to create a little bit more separation between my paper and the background, I can select the background and you can see that it's highlighted in an orange border. So that's how I know I've selected that object. And I can go to this icon here, which is its material and say new say use nodes and then this will just allow us to pick a color for that background so something like you know darker gray maybe so that our paper stands out and now at any point if i want to see what the camera sees with all the lighting and rendering in its full quality i can just press f12 and we'll do this several times as we go around so this is ultimately what i would render when i'm done but we're gonna do a few more manipulations before we get there. So we've got our paper on our background and let's move our light source someplace a little bit more meaningful so we can more easily see its effect. So we can click on it and just like we did with the paper, we can press G, which is grab, and then we can move it around. And if I wanna change my view so I'm looking straight down, I can press numpad seven and when I press G again on that light source and move it around, it's a little bit easier for me to see where it's going. And you can actually see as I'm moving this around, it's changing the lighting on that table. And so it might be a little too high, so I can hit G, press Z so that it's locked to moving up and down. And you can see once again, by changing the lighting, we're affecting our 3D objects. So now, once again, I'll look through my camera to kind of see how it looks, and it's pretty good. Now it feels like a little bit more realistic kind of lighting happening here. If I were to hit F12, we can see what the rendering looks like. So a flat piece of paper on a gray table. So now if we click on our paper again, now is where we can get to actually manipulating the shape of our image. So to manipulate a 3D object, the first thing you'll want to do is to switch into edit mode. And we do this by pressing tab. And the only difference you'll see here now is that we've got like these nodes, these tiny little nodes show up in the corner. And in this context, the nodes are referred to as vertices. But what you can do in this context is if I just select one node, for example, I have the ability to manipulate it. But as you can see, because we have so few nodes, there isn't very much meaningful manipulation that I can do. So then what I want to do is add more nodes. And a very simple way that I can do this is just by right clicking on my mesh and saying subdivide. And what you'll see is it just divided the thing along all of the existing nodes. And I can just keep doing this till I have a decent amount of detail in my mesh. Now you'll notice the shape hasn't changed. I've just add more nodes to be able to work with. And what I wanna do very simply is just maybe add some curve to this piece of paper. Now there's a lot of ways that you can do this. The way that I'm going to show uh, is just a very basic form of manipulation. So we're going to unselect everything. And I just wanna select this row of vertices down the middle. And one easy way I can do it is by holding Alt and clicking on an edge that's flowing along that direction and it'll select them all. So equivalently, if I wanted to run along the other direction of the paper, I could just hold Alt and then click along an edge that's running in that direction. So, but in this case, I want to select this line here because what I want to do is I want to pull it up. So, like we've seen so many times before, if I press G and then I just move it, you can see we can kind of move these vertices all together because they're all highlighted. However, this isn't a very meaningful manipulation of this paper. It's not really realistic. It feels more like I've created like a, the beginnings of a card castle or something. 
But if I want this to flow, what I can do is actually turn on what's called proportional editing. And we'll see now when I press G with these vertices selected, it's going to kind of proportionally modify the things around it. And I can adjust the scroll wheel to change how far that influence goes. And also, as before, I can press Z if I wanted to just restrict the movement of these vertices to be like up and down. Or if I wanted to be able to, you know, move it around in the Y and Z direction, but ignore X, I can just say Shift X. And so now I can move it up and in the Y direction, but I can't move it in the X direction. So then let's say, I don't know, we just want to do like a little bit of a hump here, bias to the left. And then if we go back to F12, we can see that we've kind of created this sort of 3D effect. There's shadow on the paper, there's shadow under the paper. And we could like replicate this with other parts of the paper. Maybe I want to change the, uh, the proportional editing shape to be a little bit different. I can select the edge on the outside here, do grab and Z and then maybe make the influence on this a lot smaller so it's a sharper kind of pull. Same thing on this side. And once again, if we hit F12 to render, we can see we've kind of created all of that 3D effect on our simple piece of paper. Now, one thing that also stands out at this stage is that you'll see there's like these lines, right, that, that are representative of like stair steps of where our vertices are. And this is just a, a product of the type of shading that we're doing. So if we exit edit mode and we right click on this and we say, you know what, I don't want flat shading, but I want smooth shading, you'll see all of that now goes away. And it creates sort of like gradients, if you will, for each one of those vertex or quads. So then if we render one more time, what you can see is now we have, you know, our smooth piece of paper that's just kind of bent, you know, as we've modified it just by doing some simple manipulations of that plane. You know, as, as you extrapolate this whole concept, you can, you can kind of anticipate that there's a lot of different, different ways that you can manipulate uh, this piece of paper. We could very easily, you know, rotate it, you know, and, and the, the lighting and everything follows. We could re-render. You can see the shadows are very consistent because of our light source. And then once you get to the end and you render and you feel like you're pretty happy with what you ended up with, you can then go to this menu up here and say image save as and you could save it as a PNG, you could save it as anything else and at that point you could re-import it into PaintShop Pro if you wanted to do further image editing. So that's it for this one. Like I said, a quick introduction to just some very basic things you can do in Blender to create a 3D effect starting with just a single image. As always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content that I post, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page or my Teespring page. And I'll see you guys next time.